They have been working in the same college for uh, so many years. Yes, St. Agnes College itself and now Swastika. Mm. Our connectivity is very Join us there. Uh -huh. Sir, uh, we are on live now. Yeah. Please send the link to the book. Yeah. Okay, sir. Who is it? Puja. Diksha. Diksha. Okay. Oh, ma'am. I think uh, Abhilash yeah, temporarily got discussed. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I've come back. <laughs> some some uh, technical problem was there. Uh, the... <laughs> always keep our fingers crossed when it is online. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> the same. Yeah. But we should and... be thankful that we can at least connect in this manner. Yes, yes, madam. Because of that, at least we could connect our children also. Yes. It's a blessing, actually. <laughs> Otherwise, educational institutions would have come to a standstill, no? I know. Couldn't have. Uh... Mm. And we have learned so many things from our juniors, our students. Like, it's become <laughs> like uh, yeah. seniors have become juniors, juniors have become seniors. Like so many things we learned uh, during this COVID period. When we are pushed against the wall, then <coughs> yeah, yeah, true. Upgrading ourselves. Good mm. start, madam. Yes. Yes, okay. Good evening, everybody. Happy English and Education web series on English language empowerment and soft skills. A series started by English Show, English Teachers Forum Mudupi in collaboration with Sushita National School of Mangalore. The series has seen so far 45 programs on different topics which are related to English language proficiency and child psychology and topics related to education and other soft skills also. Today, we are with one, more, one of the important topics, most, most needed topic uh, uh, regarding articles. Articles for the Art of Articulation. The session will be taken by Dr. Malini and Habar, the principal of uh, Swastika National School, Mangalore. I would like to extend my heartfelt welcome to Dr. Malini and Habar. Welcome you, back. And at the same time, I would like to welcome uh, Adidashe's principal SMS English Medium School, CBSC, Brahmavar. Madam, welcome to you also. And at the same time, I would like to welcome the faculty members of Sasika National School, today's host, the Diksha Madam, and most importantly, the teachers who have joined on Zoom and uh, YouTube Live uh, from different corners of the state. Welcome all of you. Now, I would like to go further with the introduction of today's uh, chief guest, Atlasha is. Uh, she is the principal of uh, SMS English Medium School, Brahmabur. She completed uh, her BSc, BA, MA in English, MA in Canada, and MA. She has the work experience uh, uh, as the English lecturer in SMS College, Brahmabur, from 1995 to 1996. And uh, she has been working uh, in SM, uh, SMS English Medium School, Brahmabur, CBSC, from 2000. 2000, 2000 and to 2000 to 2004 as teacher, 2004 and 2000 up to 2016 as vice principal, and from 2016 till date as the principal of that college. Uh, she is passionate about uh, arts, literature, and theater, trained in classical music, dance, and ekshigana in childhood, recognized as a theater actor, director, and writer. The plays she has written are Ambe Ambike. Uh, Gangi Parasanga, Padukalu Bidi, Mahila Bharata is in a, a translation. Arasu Kanasu, Nanu, 
ವಿಜ್ಞಾನಿಯಾಗುವೆ ಚೈಲ್ಡ್ ಚಿಲ್ಡ್ರನ್ ಪ್ಲೇ ಪಬ್ಲಿಷ್ ಬೈ ರಂಗಾಯಣ ಮೈಸೂರ್ ಮಳೆ ಬಂತು ಮಳೆ ಚಿಲ್ಡ್ರನ್ಸ್ ಪ್ಲೇ ಪಬ್ಲಿಷ್ ಆಸ್ ಅ ಬುಕ್ ಲೇಟರ್ ಮ್ಯೂಸಿಕಲಿ ಕಂಪೋಸ್ ಬೈ ಶ್ರೀಕಾಂತ್ ಸೋಮ್ಯಾಜಿ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಆಡಿಯೋ ಸಿಡಿ ಹ್ಯಾ ವಾಸ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ರಿಲೀಸ್ ಮಾಯಕ್ ದ ಹೂ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಅ ಚೈಲ್ಡ್ ಚಿಲ್ಡ್ರನ್ಸ್ ಪ್ಲೇ ಶಿ ಇಸ್ ಎ ಕಾಲಮಿಸ್ಟ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಹಾ ಸೀತಾ ಇಸ್ ಅ ಫೇಮಸ್ ಫಿಮೇಲ್ ಸೆಂಟ್ರಿಕ್ ಸೀರೀಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಆರ್ಟಿಕಲ್ಸ್ ಪಬ್ಲಿಷ್ ಇನ್ ಉದಯವಾಣಿ ಸಾಪ್ತಾಹಿಕ ಸಂಪದ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಹರ್ ವೇರಿಯಸ್ ಸ್ಟೋರೀಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಪೋಯಮ್ಸ್ ಆರ್ ಪಬ್ಲಿಷ್ ಇನ್ ಡಿಫ್ರೆಂಟ್ ಮ್ಯಾಗ್ಝೀನ್ಸ್ ಶಿ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಪ್ರೆಸೆಂಟೆಡ್ ಮೆನಿ ಪೇಪರ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ಡಿಫ್ರೆಂಟ್ ಕಾನ್ಫರೆನ್ಸಸ್ ಸ್ಕೂಲ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಕಮ್ಯುನಿಟಿ ಆಫ್ ಸಿಂಬಯೋಟಿಕ್ ರಿಲೇಷನ್ಶಿಪ್ ಫುಟ್ಪ್ರಿಂಟ್ಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಇಂಟರ್ನ್ಯಾಷನಲ್ ಸಿಂಪೋಸಿಯಂ ಆಟ್ ಎಲ್ ಆರ್ ಐ ಎಸ್ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ಅವರ್ ಇನ್ ಟೂ ತೌಸಂಡ್ ಸಿಕ್ಸ್ ಥಿಯೇಟರ್ promoting wholesome development of learners international conference at lris bank from our theater in classroom to inculcate value among learners seventh iccp international conference at cms lucknow adoption of theater in the classroom uh, at uh, bangalore university kannada sahitya lekakiyara koduge kannada sahitya ke lekakiyara koduge dubai kannada sahitya kam sammelana in 2010 at dubai mahile mattu kale ಮುಂಬೈ ಕನ್ನಡ ಸಂಘ ಮುಂಬೈ ಮಹಿಳೆ ಮತ್ತು ರಂಗಭೂಮಿ ರಂಗಭೂಮಿ ಉಡುಪಿ ಚಿಂತನ ವೇದಿಕೆ ತಿಳಿಸ್ತಾಯಿ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಗಾಂಧಿ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಎಜುಕೇಷನ್ ಕಂಟೆಂಪ್ರರಿ ಕನ್ಸರ್ನ್ ಪಾರ್ಕ್ ಪ್ರಾಡಕ್ಟ್ ಪ್ರಾಜೆಕ್ಟ್ ಟೀಮ್ ಮಾಹೆ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಯೂನಿವರ್ಸಿಟಿ ಕಾಲೇಜ್ ಲಂಡನ್ ಯು ಕೆ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಶಿ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಗಿವನ್ ಮೆನಿ ಆಕಾಶ್ ಆಕಾಶವಾಣಿ ಪ್ರೋಗ್ರಾಮ್ಸ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಟಾಕ್ಸ್ ಆನ್ ಶಿಕ್ಷಣದಲ್ಲಿ ರಂಗಭೂಮಿ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಲಿಂಗ ಸೂಕ್ಷ್ಮತೆ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಬೀನ್ ಬ್ರಾಡ್ಕಾಸ್ಟ್ ಇನ್ ಆಕಾಶವಾಣಿ ರೇಡಿಯೋ ಆಲ್ ಓವರ್ ದ ಸ್ಟೇಟ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಗೈನ್ ಪಬ್ಲಿಸಿಟಿ uh she is the resource person for various uh, trained uh, as a resource person she trained various teachers as a cbc resource person conducted workshops for students as a theater director as an organizer established a theater school for children called dimsal conducted weekend acting classes and uh, summer camps for students uh, pro- produced many various drama also has been conducting classical music program for the past 17 years and also she has recently conducted the session called art integrated learning significance and possibilities to the principles of association of cbsc and icsc schools udp and dakshin kannada shivamogga sahodaya cbsc lris ramavar uh, this is our today's chief guest i would like to welcome her again to our program and i request her to share her ideas and her talks with the teachers and you are muted ellarige namaskara shikshaka dinacharaneya munna dinavada ivattu aneka shikshaka sangathigala jothege ond olle karyakramadalli bhagavahistha irodakke thumba santosha anta anistha ide happy english idu Uh, the very title itself is very catchy as well as very meaningful howdu now madwa yavde kelsa irabodu namma kalike irabodu adu santosadayakavagiruvaga adu koduvantaha pratiphala kuda thumba parinamakariyagirutte annodu namgellarigu gottide aa drushtiyinda ivattina ee karyakrama eshto 40 45 varagalinda nadaskon bartta idare prati varavu ಲೈಕ್ ಮೈಂಡೆಡ್ ಟೀಚರ್ಸ್ ಸಮಾನ ಮನಸ್ಕ ಎಲ್ಲ ಶಿಕ್ಷಕರು ಜೊತೆ ಸೇರಿ ವೈವಿಧ್ಯಮಯವಾದ ವಿಷಯಗಳಿಗೆ ತಮ್ಮನ್ನ ತೆರೆದುಕೊಂಡು ತೆರೆದುಕೊಂಡಿದ್ರಿಂದಾಗಿ ಅವರ ಅರಿವಿನ ವಿಸ್ತಾರ ಆಗತ್ತೆ ಹಾಗೆ ಆ ಸಂವೇದನೆ ಸೂಕ್ಷ್ಮ ಆಗ ಆಗ್ತಾ ಹೋಗುತ್ತೆ ಇಂತಹ ಸೆಷನ್ಗಳು ನಮ್ಗೆ ತುಂಬಾ ಮುಖ್ಯ ಆಗತ್ತೆ ಯಾಕಂದ್ರೆ ನಾವೆಲ್ಲರೂ ಒಂದಿಷ್ಟು ವರ್ಷ ಕೆಲಸ ಮಾಡಿದ ಮೇಲೆ ನಾವು ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪೀರಿಯನ್ಸ್ಡ್ ಟೀಚರ್ಸ್ ಅಂತ ಅಂದ್ಕೊಂಡು ಬಿಟ್ಟಿರ್ತೇವೆ ಇದು ಹೇಗಾಗತ್ತಂದ್ರೆ ಒಂದ್ ರೀತಿ ಪೆನ್ಸಿಲ್ ಬರ್ದು ಬರ್ದು ಮುಂಡಾದ ಹಾಗೆ ಅದನ್ನ ಆಗಾಗ್ಗೆ ಶಾರ್ಪನ್ ಮಾಡ್ಕೊಳ್ತಾ ಇರ್ಬೇಕಾಗತ್ತೆ ಸೊ ಅಂಥದ್ದಕ್ಕೆ ಈ ತರದ ಏನು ಸೆಷನ್ಸ್ ಇರ್ಬೋದು ಡಿಸ್ಕಷನ್ಸ್ ಇರ್ಬೋದು ಮಾತುಕತೆ ಇರಬಹುದು ಇದು ಬಹಳ ಬಹಳ ಮುಖ್ಯ ಆಗತ್ತೆ ಮತ್ತು ಬಹಳ ವಿಶೇಷ ಅಂದ್ರೆ ನಾವು ಇದು ನಿರಂತರವಾಗಿ ನಡ್ಕೊಂಡು ಬರ್ತಿದೆ ಸತತವಾಗಿ ಮಾಡ್ತಾ ಇದ್ದಾರೆ ತುಂಬಾ ಸಿಸ್ಟಮ್ಯಾಟಿಕ್ ಆಗಿ ಮಾಡ್ತಾ ಇದ್ದಾರೆ ಇದು ಬಹಳ ಅಪರೂಪ ಆರಂಭದಲ್ಲಿ ನಾವು ಪ್ರಾರಂಭ ಮಾಡಿ ಬಿಡ್ತೇವೆ ಅದನ್ನ ಕಂಟಿನ್ಯೂ ಮಾಡ್ಕೊಂಡು ಹೋಗುದು ಸ್ವಲ್ಪ ಕಷ್ಟ
ಆ ಕಾರಣಕ್ಕೆ ಈ ಪ್ರೋಗ್ರಾಮ್ ಅನ್ನ ಆಯೋಜನೆ ಮಾಡ್ತಾ ಇರುವಂತಹ ಅಶೋಕ್ ತೆಕ್ಕಟ್ಟೆ ಅವರಿಗೆ ಮತ್ತೆ ಈ ಸ್ವಸ್ತಿಕಾ ಗ್ರೂಪ್ ಆಫ್ ಇನ್ಸ್ಟಿಟ್ಯೂಷನ್ ಅವರಿಗೂ ಕೂಡ ನಾನು ನನ್ನ ಪ್ರೀತಿಯ ಅಭಿನಂದನೆಗಳನ್ನ ಹೇಳೋದಕ್ಕೆ ಇಷ್ಟಪಡ್ತೇನೆ ಮತ್ತು ಇದು ಇನ್ನು ನಿರಂತರವಾಗಿ ನಡೀಲಿ ಇನ್ನು ಹೊಸ ಹೊಸ ಕಲ್ಪನೆಯೊಂದಿಗೆ ಸಾಕಾರಗೊಳ್ಳಲಿ ಈಗ ಈಗಾಗಲೇ ಅನೇಕ ಶಿಕ್ಷಕರು ಪ್ರತಿ ವಾರದಿಂದ ವಾರಕ್ಕೆ ಶಿಕ್ಷಕರ ಸಂಖ್ಯೆ ಇದ್ರ ಜೊತೆ ಜಾಸ್ತಿ ಆಗ್ತಾ ಇದೆ ಇದು ಇದರ ಯಶಸ್ಸನ್ನ ಯಶಸ್ಸಿಗೆ ಒಂದು ರೀತಿಯಲ್ಲಿ ಪ್ರೂಫ್ ಅನ್ಸ ಕೊಡ್ತಾ ಇದೆ ಇದು ಹೀಗೆ ಮುಂದುವರಿಲಿ ಅನ್ನೋ ಒಂದು ಆಶಯ ಹಾಗೆ ಇವತ್ತಿನ ಟಾಪಿಕ್ ಕೂಡ ತುಂಬಾ ಇಂಟ್ರೆಸ್ಟಿಂಗ್ ಆಗಿದೆ ಯಾಕಂದ್ರೆ ಈ ಆರ್ಟಿಕಲ್ಸ್ ಅನ್ನುವಂಥದ್ದು ಎ ಆಂಡ್ ಇದು ಇಂಗ್ಲಿಷ್ನದೇ ಆದ ಒಂದು ವೈಶಿಷ್ಟ್ಯಪೂರ್ಣವಾದಂತಹ ಭಾಷಾ ಪ್ರಯೋಗ ನಮ್ಮ ಭಾರತೀಯ ಭಾಷೆಯಲ್ಲಿ ಇಂಥದ್ದೊಂದು ಪ್ರಯೋಗ ನಮ್ಗೆ ಕಾಣಕ್ ಸಿಗೋದಿಲ್ಲ ನೀವು ನೌನ್ಸ್ ಅಬ್ಜೆಕ್ಟಿವ್ಸ್ ವರ್ಬ್ಸ್ ಯಾವ್ದು ತಕೊಂಡ್ರು ಇದೆ ಬಟ್ ಆರ್ಟಿಕಲ್ಸ್ ಮಾತ್ರ ಇದು ಇಂಗ್ಲಿಷ್ನದ್ದೇ ಆದ ಒಂದು ವೈಶಿಷ್ಟ್ಯ ಆಗಿದೆ ಮತ್ತು ಇನ್ನೊಂದು ಇಂಗ್ಲಿಷ್ನದ್ದೇ ಇನ್ನೊಂದು ಗುಣ ಏನಂದ್ರೆ ಇಲ್ಲಿ ಯಾವುದೋ ಒಂದು ಸಿದ್ಧ ಸೂತ್ರವೋ ಅಥವಾ ರೂಲ್ಸ್ ಅಂತ ಇಟ್ಕೊಂಡು ನಾವು ಪಾಠ ಮಾಡೋದಕ್ಕೆ ಅಥವಾ ಹೇಳಲಿಕ್ಕೆ ಹೋದ್ರೆ ಇದಕ್ಕಿದ್ದ ಹಾಗೆ ಅದಕ್ಕೆ ವಿರುದ್ಧವಾದದ್ದು ಒಂದು ಇರುತ್ತೆ ನಮ್ಗೆಲ್ಲ ಗಲಿಬಿಲಿ ಆಗಿ ಹೋಗುವಂತ ಸಾಧ್ಯತೆಯೇ ಜಾಸ್ತಿ ಈ ಇಲ್ಲಾಜಿಕಲ್ ಆಗಿರೋದೇ ಲಾಜಿಕ್ ಆಗ ಆಗುವ ಒಂದು ವಿಶೇಷ ಗುಣವು ಇಂಗ್ಲಿಷ್ ನಲ್ಲಿ ಇದೆ ಆ ದೃಷ್ಟಿಯಿಂದ ಇದನ್ನ ನಾವು ಹೆಚ್ಚು ಹೆಚ್ಚು ಅಭ್ಯಾಸ ಮಾಡ್ತಾ ಹೋದ ಹಾಗೆ ಪ್ರಾಕ್ಟೀಸ್ ಮಾಡ್ತಾ ಹೋದ ಹಾಗೆ ನಮ್ಗೆ ಕರಗತ ಆಗತ್ತೆ ಇದು ಎಲ್ಲ ಭಾಷೆಯ ದೃಷ್ಟಿಯಿಂದ ಸಹಜವಾದದ್ದು ಯಾಕಂದ್ರೆ ಭಾಷೆ ಅನ್ನೋದು ಒಂದು ಸಬ್ಜೆಕ್ಟ್ ಅಲ್ಲ ಅದ್ರ ತಿಳುವಳಿಕೆ ಪಡೆಯುವುದಕ್ಕಿಂತ ಅದನ್ನ ಅಭ್ಯಾಸ ಮಾಡ್ತಾ ಮಾಡ್ತಾ ಅದೊಂದು ಸ್ಕಿಲ್ ಅದು ಕೌಶಲ ನಮ್ಗೆ ಕರಗತ ಆಗತ್ತೆ ಲೈಕ್ ಕಾಂಪಿಟೆನ್ಸಿ ಬರುತ್ತೆ ಆ ದೃಷ್ಟಿಯಿಂದ ನನ್ಗೆ ಮಾಲಿನಿ ಮೇಡಮ್ ಅವರ ಇವತ್ತಿನ ಸೆಷನ್ ಬಗ್ಗೆ ಐ ಆಮ್ ವೆರಿ ವೆರಿ ಕ್ಯೂರಿಯಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಐ ಆಮ್ ಈಗರ್ ಟು ಲಿಸನ್ ಟು ಹರ್ ಅದು ಕೂಡ ಚೆನ್ನಾಗಿ ಆಗ್ಲಿ ಅನ್ನುವ ಒಂದು ಹಾರೈಕೆಯನ್ನ ಈ ಕ್ಷಣದಲ್ಲಿ ಕೊಡೋದಕ್ಕೆ ಇಷ್ಟಪಡ್ತೇನೆ ಮತ್ತು ಶಿಕ್ಷಕರ ದಿನಾಚರಣೆ ತುಂಬಾ ವಿಶೇಷವಾದ ದಿವಸ ಇವತ್ತು ಅಂತ ಅನ್ಸುತ್ತೆ ಯಾವತ್ತಿಗಿಂತಲೂ ಹೆಚ್ಚಾಗಿ ಈ ಕೋವಿಡ್ ಸಂದರ್ಭದಲ್ಲಿ ಶಿಕ್ಷಕರ ಮಹತ್ವ ಮತ್ತು ಅಗತ್ಯ ನಮ್ಮ ಸಮಾಜದ ಎಲ್ಲರಿಗೂ ಅರ್ಥ ಆಗಿದೆ ಅಂತ ನಾನು ಅಂದ್ಕೊಳ್ತೇನೆ ಯಾಕಂದ್ರೆ ನಾವು ಬರೀ ಪಾಠ ಮಾಡುವವರು ಅಂತ ಆಗಿದ್ರೆ ಈಗ ಮಕ್ಕಳು ಶಾಲೆಗೆ ಬರಬೇಕು ಅಥವಾ ಪೋಷಕರು ಮಕ್ಕಳನ್ನ ಶಾಲೆ ಕಳಿಸ್ಬೇಕು ಅಂತ ಯಾಕೆ ಇಷ್ಟು ಹಪ್ಪ ಹಪ್ಪಿಸ್ತಾ ಇದ್ದಾರೆ ಯಾಕಂದ್ರೆ ನಿಮ್ಗೆ ಪಾಠ ರೆಡಿಮೇಡ್ ಪಾಠ ಎಲ್ಲ ಕಡೆ ಸಿಗತ್ತೆ ಈಗ ಇಂಟರ್ನೆಟ್ ಹೋದ್ರೆ ಎಲ್ಲ ಸಬ್ಜೆಕ್ಟಿನ ಎಲ್ಲ ಏನು ಅನೇಕ ಜ್ಞಾನ ಮೂಲಗಳಿವೆ ಮಕ್ಕಳಿಗೆ ಗೊತ್ತಿದೆ ಅದು ನಮ್ಗಿಂತ ಚೆನ್ನಾಗಿ ಗೊತ್ತಿದೆ ಅದು ಸಿಕ್ಕಿ ಬಿಡುತ್ತೆ ಆದ್ರೂ ಕೂಡ ಅದನ್ನ ಮೀರಿ ಅವ್ರಿಗೆ ಶಾಲೆಗೆ ಬರಬೇಕು ಅಂತ ಅಂದ್ರೆ ಮಕ್ಕಳಿಗೆ ಟೀಚರ್ಸ್ ಹತ್ರ ಮಾತಾಡಬೇಕು ಇಂಟರಾಕ್ಟ್ ಮಾಡಬೇಕು ಸಂವಹನ ಮಾಡಬೇಕು ಯಾಕಂದ್ರೆ ಕಲಿಕೆ ಅಂತ ಹೇಳಿದ್ರೆ ಅದು ಜಸ್ಟ್ ಇನ್ಫಾರ್ಮೇಶನ್ ಅಂತ ಕೊಡುವಂಥದ್ದಲ್ಲ ನಾವ್ ಇನ್ನೊಬ್ಬರ ಜೊತೆಗೆ ಮಾತಾಡ್ತಾ ಡಿಸ್ಕಶನ್ ಮಾಡ್ತಾ ನಮ್ಮ ಅರಿವನ್ನ ನಾವು ಹೆಚ್ಚು ಮಾಡ್ಕೊಳ್ತಾ ಹೋಗುದು ಹಾಗಾಗಿ ನನ್ನ ಪ್ರಕಾರ ಶಿಕ್ಷಕರು ಅಂದ್ರೆ ಅವರು ಮಕ್ಕಳಲ್ಲಿ ಅರಿವನ್ನ ಮೂಡಿಸುವಂಥವರು ಮಕ್ಕಳು ಏನು ಜ್ಞಾನವನ್ನ ದಕ್ಕಿಸ್ಕೊಂಡಿದ್ದಾರೆ ಅದನ್ನ ಒಂದು ಸಾಮರ್ಥ್ಯವಾಗಿ ಪರಿವರ್ತನೆ ಆಗೋದಕ್ಕೆ ಇವರು ಮಾರ್ಗದರ್ಶಕರು ಕಾಂಪಿಟೆನ್ಸಿ ಬೇಸ್ಡ್ ಲರ್ನಿಂಗ್ ಅಂತ ತುಂಬಾ ಮಾತಾಡ್ತೇವೆ ನಾವೀಗ ಬಟ್ ಅದು ಹೆಚ್ಚು ಹೆಚ್ಚು ಆಗಬೇಕು ಇವತ್ತು ನಾವು ಆರ್ಟಿಫಿಷಿಯಲ್ ಇಂಟೆಲಿಜೆನ್ಸ್ ಯುಗದಲ್ಲಿ ಇದ್ದೇವೆ ಹಾಗಾಗಿ ಮಕ್ಕಳಿಗೆ ನಾಲೆಜ್ ಸಿಕ್ಕೋದೇನು ಕಷ್ಟ ಇಲ್ಲ ಅವರ ಬೆರಳು ತುದಿಯಲ್ಲಿ ಮಾಹಿತಿಗಳು ಸಿಕ್ಕಿ ಬಿಡತ್ತೆ ಹಾಗಾಗಿ ನಾವು ಯಾವತ್ತೂ ಮಾಡಿದ ಹಾಗೆ
ಎಷ್ಟೋ ಸಾರಿ ಬೇರೆ ಬೇರೆ ಕಾರಣಕ್ಕೆ ಪೋಷಕರಿಂದಾಗಿ ಶಾಲೆಗಳಿಂದಾಗಿ ಸಮಾಜದಿಂದಾಗಿ ಮಕ್ಕಳು ತಮ್ಮ ಬಾಲ್ಯವನ್ನೇ ಕಳ್ಕೊಳ್ತಾ ಬರ್ತಾರೆ ಅದು ನಮ್ಮ ಶಾಲೆಗಳು ಅದನ್ನ ಕಾಪಾಡ್ಬೇಕು ಹಾಗಾಗಿ ಬರೀ ಏನು ಪ್ರಿ ಪ್ರೈಮರಿ ಸ್ಕೂಲ್ ಅಲ್ಲ ನಮ್ಮ ಇಡೀ ಶಾಲೆಗಳೇ ಮಕ್ಕಳ ಬಾಲ್ಯವನ್ನ ಕಾಪಿಡುವಂತಹ ಚೈಲ್ಡ್ಹುಡ್ ಕೇರ್ ಸೆಂಟರ್ಸ್ ಆಗಬೇಕು ಮತ್ ನಾವೆಲ್ಲ ಟೀಚರ್ಸ್ ಎಲ್ಲಾ ಶಿಕ್ಷಕರು ಅದಕ್ಕಾಗಿ ನಮ್ಮನ್ನ ಇನ್ನೂ ಏನು ದಿನ ದಿನ ನಮ್ಮನ್ನ ಅಪ್ಸ್ಕಿಲ್ ಮಾಡ್ಕೊಳ್ತಾ ಹೋಗ್ಬೇಕು ಅದಕ್ಕೆ ಇಂತಹ ಸೆಷನ್ಸ್ ತುಂಬಾ ಏನು ಸಹಕಾರಿ ಆಗಲಿ ಅಂತ ಹೇಳ್ತಾ ಎಲ್ಲ ಶಿಕ್ಷಕರಿಗೂ ಶಿಕ್ಷಕ ದಿನಾಚರಣೆಯ ಶುಭಾಶಯಗಳನ್ನ ಕೋರಿ ನಮ್ಮ ಮುಗಿಸ್ತೇನೆ ಶಿಕ್ಷಕರನ್ನು ಉದ್ದೇಶಿಸಿ ಮುಖ್ಯ ಅತಿಥಿಗಳ ನೆರೆಯಲ್ಲಿ ಪ್ರೇರಣಾದಾಯಕ ಮಾತುಗಳ ಹಂಚಿಕೊಂಡಿದ್ದೀರಿ ಹಾಗೆ ಚಿಂತನಾರ್ಹ ವಿಚಾರಗಳನ್ನು ಕೂಡ ಹಂಚಿಕೊಂಡು ಕಾರ್ಯಕ್ರಮಕ್ಕೆ ಪ್ರಾಮುಖ್ಯತೆ ನೀಡಿದ್ದೀರಿ ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಯು ಸೋ ಮಚ್ ನೀವು ನಮ್ಮ ಕಾರ್ಯಕ್ರಮದ ಉಡುಪಿ ಇದ್ದು ಕಾರ್ಯಕ್ರಮದ ಭಾಗವಹಿಸಬೇಕಾಗುತ್ತೇನೆ ನಾವು ಐ ಲೈಕ್ ಟು ಮೂವ್ ಹೆಡ್ ಟು ಹ್ಯಾಪ್ ದ ಇಂಟ್ರೊಡಕ್ಷನ್ ಆಫ್ ಟುಡೇಸ್ ಟ್ರೈನರ್ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಮಾಲಿನಿ ಎನ್ ಹೆಬ್ಬಾರ್ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಮಾಲಿನ್ ಎನ್ ಹೆಬ್ಬಾರ್ ಇಸ್ ದ ಫಾರ್ಮರ್ ಎಚ್ ಓ ಡಿ ಅಂಡ್ ಅಸೋಸಿಯೇಟ್ ಪ್ರೊಫೆಸರ್ ಆಫ್ ಇಂಗ್ಲಿಷ್ ಆಫ್ ಸೈನ್ಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಸೆಂಟರ್ ಫಾರ್ ಪಿ ಜಿ ಸ್ಟಡೀಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ರಿಸರ್ಚ್ ಇಸ್ ಆನ್ ಎಮ್ ಎ ಎಮ್ ಫಿಲ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಪಿ ಎಚ್ ಡಿ ಇನ್ ಇಂಗ್ಲಿಷ್ ಲಿಟ್ರೇಚರ್ her minor research program was on innovative methods of teaching english in a multicultural context she has done additional certificate course in journalism and hrd she is the former faculty of ims time and trisha uh, which trains students for competitive exam dr hebbar has also to her credit membership in various bodies and organizations she is a member of research ethics committee of kasturba medical college a member of anti sexual harassment and women's prevention cell nite chapter president and district officer of toastmasters was chairman of mangalore udupi chapter of indian society for training and development past district chairman of innerville district 318 member of samata a women's organization and bvs member of school of social work she was also the former coordinator of iqac and nac of St. Anne's College, IQAC of Father Muller's Nursing and Social Work, also former member of SGM Mujure and St. Aloysius College, Mangalore. Also toward due credit, many awards won DTM to Smartest Prize, Service to Mankind Award from uh, Road Track and UNESCO, one outstanding Toastmaster Award from International Orientation Center, as also was as a women achiever by Dijiva.com. She also has publication and presentation to her cradle, presented papers and articles in national and international journals. She has also been in faculty development program of different educational institutions, resource person in webinars, has been a pioneer in innovative methods of teaching as a resource person for a few teachers of Karnataka. This is today's uh, resource person, uh, Dr. Malini and Hebbar. I'm very, we are very happy to have her again in our series uh, in the previous week we had her as uh, the chief guest in this week we had her uh, have her as the uh, trainer here resource person uh, welcome you madam once again and i would like to hand over this session to you over to you madam thank you thank you mr ashok tekatte for your faith in me last week you called me to be your chief guest and this week you have called me to be your resource person so i remain grateful to you very happy to share the virtual platform with the uh, abilasha in just 5 minutes time she covered diverse topics from uh, online classes teachers day to national education policy and she hit the nail on the head when she spoke about the relevance of the topic that has been uh, given to me or rather chosen by me i am very happy to be with all of you because i think it's after a long time i have the opportunity of being with english teachers earlier we did have many workshops when we came together we discussed important aspects of the language and of the literary aspect of the subject that we teach etc etc but now of late i have not had the chance of interacting with the english teachers that is why i am very happy to be sharing this zoom platform with the english teachers of i don't know 
whether it is at the district level or state level, I don't know, all of you, my dear friends. Uh, my focus today would be not on taking a session as such, but placing before you my gray areas, because you see, as Abhilasha said, none of us can be completely at ease when it comes to the concept of articles, because it's more instinctive than rule-based. So we will always have our doubts when we open our mouth, especially in a gathering of this kind where we have only, most of you are English teachers. Again, we start doubting. We have this uneasiness, whether we use our articles properly because we have uh, sometimes redundant articles. Sometimes when we need articles, we don't have articles. We have all sorts of problems. So today my focus would be not only on the rules of these three articles, A and the, but also as teacher, as teachers, how is it possible for us to take this concept in our own class classrooms? So I request you to be interactive. I'm going to opt for my gallery view. And uh, when I ask a few questions, I truly, not exactly questions, when I ask for interactions, I truly hope that you will unmute yourselves in the first instance and also come on camera in the second instance. It would be very happy. It would be nice to see your faces even as I listen to your voice. Now, just to make it a little interesting and interactive, I pose a challenge before all of you. And the challenge is, I want you to introduce yourselves to me but then, of course, there is a condition. I can see Rupa and Rekha who are on camera. Of course, Ashok also is on camera. Now, what I want you to do is uh, Rupa, Rekha who are on camera and others also, Ashok also, whoever. Now, I want you to introduce yourself. But when you introduce yourself, now, if I have to say, I am Malini. I am the principal of uh, Swastika National School. I must also have one more additional sentence where I say a sentence where I use an, the indefinite article an, and you know that if I have to use the indefinite article an, I must have a word beginning with one of the vowels. For example, I can say that I'm like an apple because you never know. An apple, you can count the seeds of the apple, but you do not know how many apples will grow out of those seeds. So when I give that kind of an analogy, I'm using a sentence using the indefinite article and. So you'll have to think of words of fruit, vegetables, animals. You can say, I am an owl because I can see even when it is dark. Okay. So did you all get what exercise I want you to take part in? Now, can I begin with you, Rekha? Uh, you can give your introduction. You can say, I'm Rekha. And you can say, what is it that you do in life professionally? And then one more sentence using the indefinite article and with any of the choices from the list that I've given you. Okay. Fruit, vegetable, or what did I say? Animal. Okay. Yeah. Good evening, all. Uh, I am Rekha, working as a teacher in Bantwal Taluk. Uh, I would like to say I am the parent of Srinidhi who is studying in your college, oh. Sustika National School. Yes. <laughs> Hello, I'm a great student. <laughs> yeah. mm. uh, I am like uh, an egg, okay. uh, which, is, uh, uh, which gives more proteins to humans. Okay. That's all. Thank okay. you. Good. Very good. Thank you, Rekha. Rupa? Good evening, everyone. I'm Rupa Dinesh Kini. I'm a principal of Shantani Ketan English Medium School. Uh, I'm a leader and I prefer to study and learn every day. I'm like a pear, a fruit, which is round. Uh, and one minute. I want something to go with an. Okay. Pear wouldn't go with an. I okay, want uh, probably you can say 
any other fruit that would go with an. My focus is on an today. Okay, fine. Uh, Maybe you can say I'm like an orange and then continue. Okay, I'm like an orange, uh, uh, sweet and uh, bitter uh, at the same time. I would not like to listen to nonsense. So I'm bitter when it comes to nonsense and I'm sweet to a person who is sweet to me. Thank you. Thank you, Rupa. Nice to know that you are a no-nonsense person. Nice to know that. Yes. Ashok, could you come up with one uh, sentence? Okay, anyone else from the audience? You can um, okay. use the uh, reaction button. Yes, thank sir. you, madam. I am Ashok Sakete, working as an assistant teacher in government higher primary school. Uh, I'm like an ant, always busy in one or other thing, and I believe that work is worship. Thank you. Very nice. An ant, and I believe in the ideal work is worship. Very good. We know that, Ashok, from the successful programs that you have been conducting. I see that there is an answer on the chat box, but I don't want to read from the chat box. I would be happier if you unmuted yourself and came up with your answer. Shashikala has come on camera. Good evening, ma'am. I'm an Indian. My name is Shashikala. Working as an assistant teacher in government high primary school, Maikala. It comes in Bahindur block. Thank you. Okay, you said I'm an Indian, is it? An Indian, yes. Okay, an Indian. All right. My condition was that you must use a fruit or a vegetable or an animal and associate the quality of that with you, but doesn't matter. It's the right sentence. Yes, Jay Lakshmi, you came on camera briefly. Would you like to say something? Uh, Jay Lakshmi, you're muted. Could you unmute yourself, please? We can't hear you, Jay Lakshmi. Uh, no, I, I think that you have some audio problem. No problem. Anyone else? Last chance. Babu. My whole one hour will go only in this. Yes. Vijay Lakshmi. Good evening, ma'am. Yes, Vijay Lakshmi. Good evening, ma'am. I am Vijay Lakshmi. I am working in government higher primary school, Sita Nadi. It's in Hebri. Uh, I am like an orange. If you open that orange, ma'am, it will look like a smile. So I want to smile <laughs> okay. every day in all right. every time. Okay, Jay Lakshmi. Quite a nice thought to keep smiling. That's a nice, uh, as they say, a smile goes a long way because it has a mile in it. Thank you very much. I see that there are more people who have switched on their camera. Thank you very much for that. But let's move on. Otherwise, I think too much time will uh, be taken only on this. Now, my intention in conducting this was in every session, we have something called an icebreaker session where the participants get the chance to interact with one another. It's very difficult to do that when it is an online uh, platform. But if you all speak a little bit, at least it's better than um, only listening to the speaker, the monotony of listening to one speaker. For that reason, I conducted it. Also, this is one way of telling you that when you take up any concept in grammar, if we just go to uh, the rules, then students will not get interested. Because the minute I say, today I'm going to deal with this concept of grammar, I say eyebrows getting raised. And generally, students don't get interested. So you'll have to think of activities with which you can involve them. And then they would have a greater level of interest in what you have to give them. There are different activities for prepositions. I have an activity, but I will not go into that. Now, my next question to you is, again, I don't go to the rules at the beginning. I work at those rules through examples. Now, today also, I'm going to do that. 
but instead of breaking you into breakout rooms although that was my original idea can i just share the screen and place some examples before you and will you uh, raise your hand basically you must raise your hand otherwise too many people will be speaking at the same time when i say raise your hand i mean to say you can use the reaction button and i i can see the reaction button when you raise your hand even when i share my screen and you can give your answer so instead of uh, uh, ashok instead of breaking them into breakout rooms shall i do this i will just keep it as an open uh, uh, discussion with all okay. is that okay with all of you now i will share my screen and i have 20 examples okay i have 20 examples and only one of those examples is grammatically right as far as articles are concerned i repeat myself please don't go and correct some uh, uh, tense structure or subject verb in case there is an oversight on my part the examples are all wrong except for one example as far as articles are concerned so each of you will have to go through these 20 examples and see which of these is the right example and make your choice. So I will give you not more than 10 minutes to do this because after all, you have to only read those 20 examples and see what problem we have in each of these examples. Is that okay with all of you? So let me now share my screen. Is my screen visible? Yes, ma'am. I think I have to move it a little down for my 20th example. Can you no, see? Uh, you can go a little up. Okay, I'll go a little higher. Um, you can reduce the font size so that everything is visible. Yes, um, I think my font size will be fine because uh, what is not seen is just this number yeah, yeah, one. Number, now, number, right? Yeah, yeah, right. So I'm also admitting people because <laughs> it's coming in my... Uh, one minute, just give me a minute. Okay, is that fine now? Can you all see? Yes, madam. Yeah, yeah. All right. So look at the 20 examples. And I, as I said, I'll give you some time. And choose one example, which according to you is grammatically right as far as articles are concerned. Also, just keep in mind as to why a particular example is wrong. You can mentally correct also. Okay. Uh, Jagdish has already raised his hand. Jagdish, do you mean to say that you have read all 20 examples and have chosen the right example already? Your speed is tremendous. You can go and appear for a competitive exam if you have already gone through 20 examples. I don't want you to say, to tell me why one example is wrong. I want you to go through all 20 examples and choose which example according to you is the right one. Okay. Nagaratna has her hand raised. I'll come to you Nagaratna later, but I'll give some time for people to go through. Now, if you want, you can even take the screenshot of this because when I discuss, I will not have it, I will not share my screen. So if you want to have these examples with you, take a screenshot.
Okay, I have Rashmi also. All right, can I stop sharing my screen now? Have all of you gone through this? Okay, I will uh, stop sharing my screen now. And I request, um, I have three hands. I have Nagaratna, Vijay Lakshmi and Rashmi who have the raised hand option, who have exercised the raised hand option. So, okay, Nagaratna, you are the first one. According to you, which of the sentences is the right one? Only one sentence is right. And which of the sentences is the right one? Please unmute yourself. Come on camera, preferably. Quickly, please. Yes, Nagaratna. Okay, okay, ma'am. One second. Good evening, ma'am. Uh, should be given the benefit of doubt. Um, that's the right sentence for you. Okay, I will not respond now as to whether that is the right sentence or not. I will move on. You can lower your hand. Yeah. Vijay Lakshmi. Vijay Lakshmi. Please unmute yourself quickly. Otherwise, we'll be wasting. I'm sorry. I thought uh, wrong sentence. No, 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 no. Only one is sorry, the right sorry. sentence. And I sorry, want to. Sorry, ma'am. Sorry. Okay, no problem. No problem. Okay. Uh, next, I have uh, Shashikala. Uh, 16th sentence, ma'am. Okay. Which, Read is the the more which is the more beautiful of the two paintings? Okay. I have uh, taken note of the answer oh. given by Nagaratna and Shashikala. Jay Lakshmi. <laughs> Am I on? Yes, Jay Lakshmi. It's our duty to poor. Okay, Jay Lakshmi, all right. Uh, Jagadish. Jagadish. Yes, madam. Madam, 17th sentence is right uh, sentence. Okay, which is that? Please read that out. There is a little water in the jug. You may drink. Okay. This is the uh, right uh, Noted, noted. Benisha. Benisha, oh, you have Yes, ma'am. Yes. Uh, the diamonds are costly. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Ashwini Shetty, have you answered already? 13 1, madam. Uh, okay. Breakfast at 8 o'clock. 13 1. Okay. Um, all right. 13th. Okay, Ashwini. Uh, is it. Uh, um, Kri uh, I can't get the name properly. Kritarth, is it? Yes, yes. Kritarth. It's uh, an unusual but nice name. Kritarth. Okay. He should be given the benefit of doubt. What is it? He should be given the benefit of doubt. Okay. That has already been chosen. So you agree with the... That is the answer, ma'am. Okay. Uh, have I covered all those who have raised their hand? Ma'am, 19th one. Who is the one who is answering? Pavitra. Pavitra, when you raise hand, then you automatically come to the top bar. That is the advantage of using that um, uh, I mean, reaction button. Oh, what did you say? 19th. Please, please yeah, read. 19th. Uh, could you give me a paper to write on? Okay. All right. Indira? Indira? I went to mall to buy clothes, ma'am. Okay, okay. All right. Uh, I think I have asked all of you to give your answers, haven't I? Okay. Now, when I say that none of you actually gave the right sentence, it is not to say that it's, um, um, it's not to say that your uh, comprehension of articles is weak. It is only to say that it's very difficult when it comes to articles to know the mistakes, which means all of us make mistakes. I request all of you to lower your hands now. I can do it for you, but if you do it yourself, it will be better. So that next time when you actually want to raise your hand, you raise your hand. So, okay. All right. Now, this is only to show that it's not at all easy for us to know 
why a sentence is wrong. And uh, that is when we take wrong sentences as right sentences. For example, some of you took uh, sixth one. One of you took the sixth one as the right one. Let me tell you why it is Can wrong. Yes, yes, yes. Third yeah. one is the... Okay. Hmm? Uh, are you asking the right sentence? Yes, I, I asked for the right sentence. Of the 20 Sorry. sentences, only one sentence is the right sentence. The 19 other questions are all wrong. Okay. Now, one of you chose the sixth one. It is a duty to help poor. Now, poor is an adjective. But when we use the adjective poor as a noun, we need to put the definite article. We need to say... Yes, it is a duty to help the poor. The poor. Yes, the poor. And the rule that you're going to give to your students is that poor is an adjective, but when we use it to represent a group of people, and when we use it as a noun, we have to use it with the definite article, the. So sixth is not the right sentence. One of you took seven as the right sentence. Now, when... You have the subject in the plural. You will not use the definite article. You will only say diamonds are costly, not the diamonds, because it's in the plural. You will say diamonds are costly. Now, some of you chose uh, uh, 13th, one of you chose the 13th one. I want to have the breakfast at 8 a.m. Now, breakfast, lunch, dinner, none of these will take any article before it. You will just say, I want to have breakfast at 8 a.m. It can take the if you are specifically referring to something. For example, I want to have the breakfast which my mom has cooked for me with so much love at 8 a.m. Then I'm making it definite. I'm not referring to breakfast in general terms. I'm making it specific and I'm saying I want to have the breakfast which my mom has cooked for me with so much love. So otherwise, I would only say, uh, can I have lunch? Can I have breakfast? And I don't use any article before those nouns. Now, one of you also said, I went to mall to buy clothes. You need, I went to the mall. You cannot say I went to mall. You have to say I went to the mall to buy some clothes or just clothes also would do. No problem. You don't need any article there to buy clothes or to buy some clothes. But you need an article before mall. I went to the mall to buy some clothes. Now, 16th sounds right, almost right. But again, it has a problem. Excuse me, ma'am. Excuse yes. me, ma'am. You can also use the went to a mall. Yes, you can say, I went to a mall. You can also use yes. the went to a mall. Correct. You can say either a mall, the mall, both are acceptable in that sentence. I went to a mall in general terms. I went to the mall. If you know that the listener knows which mall you are referring to. So both are acceptable. A mall and the mall. Who said it? I'm the actually one? you read Kritat Shetty now, ma'am. That is not Kritat Shetty. I logged in from some others. Okay. My son's ID. My name is Bujan Shetty. I'm principal of uh, Sri Lakshmi Janardhan School, uh, International School, Belmont. Okay, okay. Thank you. Thank you, Bujan, sir. Yes. But your son's name is also very nice. Kritat Shetty. For the first mm -hmm. time, I, I came across a name that is so original and nice. So, going back to the examples, now 16th, of course, uh, sounds almost right, but it has a problem. Now, when you have a comparative, which is more beautiful of the two paintings, now more beautiful is the comparative, you must use the definite article before that, which is the more beautiful of the two main paintings. So, that is the problem with the 16th. Now, 17th, there is little water in the jug. You may drink it. Again, 17th is also very deceptive. You think it is right, but then we keep saying that with words, these two words, little, few. Okay? Little, few. Unless you put a, 
it's negative in its implication. So if you say there is little water in the jug, you may drink it. It is illogical. It is like saying there is no water in the jug, you may drink it. But if you want to say you may drink it, then you must say there is a little water in the jug, you may drink it. So 17th also goes wrong. Now 18th again is very deceptive. I do agree that 16th, 17th, 18th are difficult to, uh, these three examples are difficult when it comes to the question of identifying the error. Now 18th, he should be given the benefit of doubt. Again, if you ask me why, I have no explanation because it comes under what we call the usage. We have to use the English language as it has been always used. So there is no answer if someone comes up with the question, why? The right expression is, you should be given the benefit of the doubt. There is that definite article, the, before doubt, which sounds almost wrong. Now, 19th again is a difficult one. Again, it's not the right answer, although deceptively, it looks like the right answer. Could you give me a paper to write on? Now, paper is an uncountable noun. So you can't say a paper. You have to say a sheet of paper. Now, paper becomes countable only if you refer to legal papers. But when it comes to the paper on which you write, it is taken as a sheet of paper, one sheet, two sheets. So you can't say, could you give me a paper to write on? Could you give me a sheet of paper to write on? Now, the million... Madam, excuse me, ma'am. Yes. Can I interrupt? Yes, yes. Please do. In that question, uh, sentence, he should be given the benefit of the doubt. Mm. There is a logic, ma'am. Mm. Because doubt is a specific doubt, a specific context. Yes, who is doubt is a specific Bujang, context. Bujang, is it? Is it Bujang who is speaking? Yes, yes, yes. It's yes. a specific context. That, that is why doubt precedes the. Yes, agreed. But let me also tell you that you will have any number of examples where even when it is a reference to something specific, when it comes after a preposition, we don't use the article. Okay. So that is the problem. So there are sentences either way. And that is why we take this as the right sentence because there are many other examples where after a preposition, we don't get the article, okay? Now, the million dollar question is, which is the right answer? If all the options that you have chosen have been dismissed as the wrong ones, which is the right answer? You will be shocked to know, just as I was shocked to know when I first came across this expression, you will be shocked to know that the expression in a shambles is the right expression. Our economy is in a shambles means in the state of confusion. You Google it, you will see that in a shambles is the originally accepted expression, although now sometimes people use it without the article A there. They say sometimes our economy is in shambles, but in a shambles is the original right expression. But it sounds so wrong, doesn't it? It sounds completely wrong when we say our economy is in a shambles because shambles seems to have that plural form and we are using a which goes with a singular noun. But that is the right expression. Why is it the right expression? If you go to the root of the word shambles, you will know why it is a right expression. But for today, I will only say that it is what we call usage. So it's always the usage and for us who are not native speakers of English, the question of usage is very difficult, isn't it? Because it's not our language. What would come naturally to us, instinctively to us when we speak in our own language will not come instinctively when we choose to speak in English. Now, what can help us? A few things can help us. One is keeping our ears open. 
And whenever we have some questions cropping up in our mind, finding out whether we are right or the other person is right, or reading books of good standard. When we read books, articles of good standard, naturally many structures get embedded in us. They become part of our vocabulary. So there are a few things like this which will help us. And of course, rules are there. But what I'm trying to show through these examples is that we have a set of rules, yes. But so many of these examples go beyond the rules that we have so conscientiously learned. That is when a language which is not our own poses problems. Now, before I continue, if any one of you has any question on any one of these, you may raise your, uh, you may put your question forth. You may put forth your question. Ma Anything? What about number four. Number four. Number four. Okay, that's a good question. Who is the one who asked this question? Ma'am, shall I answer that question? Yes, yes, definitely. On on saxophone, any instrument. On no, no, she asked saxophone. for the fourth one. Fourth one. No, twelfth one, ma'am. Twelfth. Twelfth one in the chat, ma'am. Somebody what? asked in the chat. Which twelfth is on the saxophone. On the chat box. Which one do you all want now? Fourth one. Fourth Sorry. one is what I heard. Somebody unmuted herself and asked for the fourth one. So, Bujang sir, is it who said? No, no. I was I was answering twelfth one, ma'am. Okay. On we'll saxophone. Come to the twelfth one. We'll come uh, to the. On 12th. saxophone, it should be. Yes. Can you repeat yourself, please? Because I was on, talking. Hmm. On saxophone, ma'am. On saxophone. Uh, no, Bujang sir. I'm sorry. No, the accepted correction is. All musical instruments take the definite article the before them. So you okay. can, do you play the saxophone? Do you play the guitar? Do you play the harmonium? Okay. Now you see the verb play, you, we use in two instances. One is playing a game, but there we definitely do, don't use the article. We don't say, does he play the cricket? We say, does he play cricket? So, names of games will not take the definite article before them. But you see, the same verb play, when it comes to musical instruments, we put the before the musical instrument, the guitar, the harmonium. Okay? So, that's the correction. Now, going back to fourth one is a very difficult one. I did not know this rule for a long time, even after having taught my students for every Sunday to three years. Malini, ma'am. Yes. Yeah, ma'am, yes. that was my question. I asked for number four, but I think I got the correction myself. Okay. Can you come up with the correction? He goes to church every Sunday to pray. Yes. Why? What is the rationale? What is the reasoning that you have for that? Reasoning? Uh, it is not a specific church. It could be any church. Um... No, that's not the explanation you would be giving to your students. Who is it? Nagaratna, is it? Who is speaking? No, ma'am, it's Tasneem. Ma'am, I was also a student in degree college. Oh, <laughs> nice to have you, Tasneem, again. <laughs> madam, okay. madam, I would like to answer it. Yes, who is it? Jagdish, ma'am. Jagdish, yes, Jagdish. Uh, with the names of uh, some words like hospital, school, temple, breakfast, lunch, dinner, market, college, Yes. But etc. When we talk in general, we do not uh, use articles. Yes, but I will um, I will change it a little bit, Jagadish. Yes, um, you're right. Your first part, you know, when it comes to certain places, okay, uh, you know, like places of work, hospital, office. When we visit those places for the primary purpose, we don't use the article. See now, going to pray. Is the primary purpose of going to that place of prayer, right? So you will not say the church. You will say he goes to church every Sunday to pray because that's the primary purpose. But supposing I am not, a, uh, I, I'm a Hindu, but I may go to St. Elosius Church to look at the fresco painting that is there. Then I go there 
for that specific purpose of looking at the painting. In which case I will say, I went to the church. But when it is the primary purpose, we don't use the article. So your explanation was right, but then slightly different from what you expressed. Yes, Tasneem, is that okay now? Yes, ma'am. Thank you so much. Okay, yes. Anything else from these 20? Any Can other question? Tell about 10th sentence. Um, okay. Now, see, we are all teachers here and I take you as, uh, you know, people with a growth um, mindset. We are all here to improve ourselves, right? Am I right or wrong? Yes, ma'am. We are all yes, here to errors. So, if I give yes, corrections... Yes, so if I give corrections incidentally, will you mind it? Will you feel that she is uh, insulting us? If you no, feel like that, I will stick no, ma'am. Okay. No, ma no. One small thing is no, that when you say tell, you must say tell us or tell me. The second pronoun should be used. Okay. Tell us. All right. Is it the 11th one you wanted or 10th one? 10th, 10th one. Tenth. Okay. Uh, this is actually something that you must take right at the beginning of taking this particular concept in grammar. What is it? Now, here, it's an abbreviation, right? It's not an acronym. It's an abbreviation. F-R-C-S. We can't read it as one word. If you can read it as one word, you call it an acronym. Now, this you can't read as one word. You have to say F-R-C-S. Now, before you take any other rule about articles, the first rule that you have to place before your students is that you have to use one of these, one of these two rather, not um, either of the two, not three, going by the sound. Now, when you say F, F, when you say F, what is the first sound? F. 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 When you say the sound is of A F. or E. Do you agree? E. A or E. Do you agree? E. F. When you say and. A yes, or E. What is and. the actual phonetic sound of F? F. Fan. 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 F. Fat. Fan. I saw a fat pin. I saw a fat a fat. F. A F. Phonetic sound of F, which is a consonant. But when you say F, F, F is a consonant, but the sound is of a vowel. So you have to say he is an FRCS. You can't say he is a FRCS. You have to say he is an FRCS because F, F, when you say it is not F, it is a. Uh, which is a vowel. So you'll have to go by the sound. And you have many examples. MBA, HR. He is an HR professional. He is an MBA, not a MBA, not a HR professional. An HR professional. An MBA. Why? The phonetic sound of M is as in mango, m, m, mango. I ate a mango, but I am an MBA. Okay. Is that clear? Whoever asked the question, who was it who asked the question? Is it clear or not? Clear, ma'am. Okay. All right. Anything else from these 20? We have already, it's uh, almost seven. So I have many other things, but if time does not permit me to take that up, then I'll have to skip, skip it. If there is nothing else here, I will proceed. Is that okay? Probably about fourth one. Fourth one. Fourth one was explained just... Sorry, not, sorry, not fourth one. It's, uh, eighth one. Eighth one. Okay. That's a, uh, you see, that's a good question. She bought 10 and... A half kilo of apples. Okay. Why a half? When half comes after a whole number. When half comes after a whole number, 
you have to put an article, 10 and a half. But if you begin the sentence, if you begin a sentence, or if you just say, I bought half kilo apples, you don't need to put any article. But if it comes after a whole number, you need to put an article, 10 and a half. Did you understand? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Any other question? Ma'am, 19th one. 19th. 19th has been explained. Uh, paper is uncountable. Okay. We give the first rule as before uncountable nouns, we don't put. Because what do we mean by uncountable? Countable is something that we can count. One, two, three, four. Right? One apple, two apples. And in English, instead of saying one apple, we say a, a, an apple or a book. All countables, singular. When it is singular, all countables will have an article coming before them. You can't use countable singulars without an article. So, I have a book. Instead of saying I have one book, you will say I have a book. But paper, the writing paper, falls under the category of uncountables, which many of us may not know. Okay? So, if you use it, you must use it as an uncountable. If you want to use it as a countable, then you'll have to say, give me a sheet of paper. Otherwise, you will say, give me some paper to write on. Okay? Did you understand? Yeah, ma'am. Thank you so much. Okay. Anyone, any other doubt? Done? Can I stop sharing this? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Okay, thank you. Some of you who give me the answer. Otherwise, I won't know whether to proceed or not. Okay. But again, I will wait for a couple of minutes or maybe a couple of seconds. If you have any doubt at this point of time, please clarify because I will be now moving on to something more complex or um, I'll be sharing with you areas, gray areas or areas which were gray for me for a long time until, you know, I kept reading and um, getting some clarification. Uh, Nisha Shetty, do you have a question? Nisha, you have raised your hand. Do you have a question? Okay, no question. All right. Now, I will again share my screen where I have my PPT on articles. But then, of course, I'm not going to deal with something that is uh, very common. I will skip some of these well-known rules because Ashok Tekate himself was a little apprehensive about the topic of articles because, uh, you see, it's something very basic. But my idea about articles is that, as our chief guest Abhilash has said, we don't have it in our language. So to internalize the rules, it's tough. It's tough to internalize the rules and we keep making mistakes. And as teachers, we influence hundreds of students who are tutored by us. So if we can minimize our errors, it will be nice. I don't mean to say that we can, we can be infallible. We will always have some errors with us, but we can try and minimize those errors. Okay. So let me now begin my other presentation. Now, I have used the word articulation. Last week, you had, sir, giving you many important rules about articulation. So the first meaning of articulation is the way you produce sounds. That's the first meaning of articulation. But I haven't taken it in its first meaning. I have taken it in its second meaning. The articulation of an idea or feeling is the expression of it, especially in words. Now, I have given the idea of improving upon your articulation by improving upon your articles because when we speak, if we have articles, when we are not supposed to have articles, it can be jarring. 
For example, one of my cousins on the WhatsApp group keeps writing, may the God bless you for birthday greetings. She always writes, may the God bless you. So whenever I read that wish, even before I can enjoy the wish, that grammatical error draws my attention. So it goes against my enjoyment of the wish actually. So that is why I have said articles for the art of articulation. Okay. Now this one for the first example, because there are so many words, but I'll skip that. These are all basic rules about articles. You will get it anywhere at all. So I'm not going to spend time on this. All this we say in class. So I'm not going to, but this is the rule that I referred to a little while ago. And this is the reverse of that rule. Little while ago, the question was about why an FRCS. And there we gave the rule F, F has the sound of A, that is why an FRCS. Now here, the reverse happens. U is a vowel, but we don't say an university, an uniform, although U is a vowel. We don't say an one rupee note, though O is a vowel. So now it's the reverse of what we discussed a little while ago. So the same logic holds good here. That is why I said the minute we take a class on articles, the first thing we have to put into the heads of our students is that we go by the sound, not just consonants and vowels, but also the sounds made by these consonants and vowels. Now here you have a vowel U, still you write a, why? Any one of you can feel free to give me the answer. Why do we say a university, a uniform? Because it has U sound, not a vowel sound. Yes, all of you have given me the answer, but the sound is of Y. Madam, you have you. You have excuse you. me, the first sound is consonant sound. Madam, excuse me, ma'am. Yes. Usually we make a mistake of teaching the students E, E, I, O, U are the vowels. Yes. They are the letters in the English alphabet. Yes. Okay. Instead, if you connect our vernacular languages with the English, mm -hmm. it will be easy to understand. Uh, uh, e, E, U, U, all those things. As a, Vowel sounds and consonant sounds. Yes. Here, E is a, but it is almost a sound, it almost sounds with the Y sound in other languages, vernacular languages. Yes. Okay, it starts with the E sound, E is a consonant sound. Yes, correct. It's very correct. difficult telling the students A, E, I, O, U are letters in the alphabet. Yes. Okay. Um, Thank you, ma'am. Yes, you have a point there. Yes. And again, it's the difference that we have in uh, two culturally different languages, geographically far removed from each other. Yes. So now one of you said um, it has the U sound, you said, but this is letter U, right? So you'll have to say it's U, which is a vowel, but which has the sound of Y, which is a consonant. It's the sound of Y here. Do you get the point? Why? Why? Which is a consonant. That is why a university, a uniform. Now the third example. We don't say an one rupee. We say a one rupee. Again, why? Oh, oh, sound. No? Because it has a ver. sound of W there. No, no. Like no, no. Like the no, no. W there. Ver, ma'am. Don't say sound of is ver, it? Huh? V. You must say sound of W. W. Okay. W. Which Found is a W consonant. is there. Yes. See, I won the race. I won the race. How do you say one? W O N. One. How do you say O N E? One. Same, right? I won the race. W O N. One rupee. One rupee. Isn't it the same? So you will have to tell your students that yes, 
O is a vowel, although Bujang sir has given us another way of looking at it. You must also say that W, it has the sound of W, which is a consonant. Is this clear? So this is the opposite of what we discussed a little while ago, where we had the consonant, but we were putting and before it. Here we have a vowel, but we are putting a before it. Okay. Now, this is very simple. Consonant, a girl, a clock, a lamp, an apple. Now, again, here, the last one, again, the same as FRCS. H is a consonant, but we say an honor because H is silent. O gets pronounced. I have seen um, very good speakers also making a mistake and saying honest. He is an he is a honest man. Pronouncing that H, it is so difficult to pronounce H. That is why H is silent there. Honesty, honest, or honor. So H is a consonant, but H is silent. And what we pronounce is the vowel O that comes after H. And because of the sound of the vowel, we put an. Okay. So again, the same thing, an orange, an umbrella, an eye, these are the usual, the one and only rule, the one and only rule, the sun, the sky, the Ganges, the Sahara, the Pacific, the Bible, the Ramayana, the Quran, this comes under the rule of one and only. Superlatives always take the definite article, the best, the tallest. I have already told you musical instruments take the definite article. I have already told you when the adjective is used as a noun to represent a whole group of people, it takes the, the poor, the old, the rich, the blind, etc. One and only rule again, the sky, the world, the North Pole. Omission of articles. Uh, take a look at this and um, if you have any doubt, you may question me. But these are all very simple rules of articles. I won't spend too much time on this. Now, when it comes to before certain phrases, okay? Now, here you see, I will go by train at noon on foot. This is what I meant a little while ago when I said after prepositions, very often we leave out. We don't put article. This is more common than the benefit of the doubt. Okay. So it comes down to what we refer to as usage. And we have no questions. We can't question the usage of a particular uh, group of speakers. Now, this is where I would like to spend some time because, frankly speaking, I used to get terribly confused over this. Till I came across this particular rule in one of the blogs, Melanie's blog, okay? She keeps writing. She is a, a professor from one of the universities. And this is the rule that I have come across and it solved my doubts for me. So I'm sharing it with you. Now, when you go to grammar books, one part of the grammar book tells you, you can use a lion to represent a whole class of lions. Another part of the same grammar book says, you can say the lion to represent a whole class of lions. Then, Again, you come across another sentence which says lions are majestic animals. Also speak about lions as a group of animals. So you start getting worried over this as to which of these is right. Now, let's be happy that at least in this area, we are lucky because all three are right. You can say a lion, the lion or lions when you want to take it as representative of the whole class. For example, a dog is a faithful animal. 
the dog is a faithful animal dogs are faithful animals all boiled down to the same thing with minute difference which has been explained to you in the explanation given at the bottom but i was so relieved to know that we don't have to break our head over whether a is right or the is right or whether plural uh, usage is right all three can be used having said this let me also say that the last one that is using it in the plural is gaining more and more uh, popularity so dogs are faithful animals lions are majestic animals elephants are uh, intelligent animals so it's gaining more and more popularity for the plural form to be used okay so is there any question up to this point anything okay now this is very important and i have taken a i have given you a mnemonic aid also zero article we indians are more guilty of using unnecessary articles than we are guilty of leaving out any uh, articles so when is it that we must have zero articles is something that we have to remember so i've given you the mnemonic aid pals p a l s so i've given this mnemonic aid pals because p stands for parks a stands for avenues l stands for lakes s stands for streets so when you use these we don't use any article you don't say i went to the central park i went to central park i went to hyde park although you have th here sixth usually we say the when we have th but because it's an avenue i went to sixth avenue not the oxford street even when you have the superscription so this also i found very useful when i came across this particular usage because as i already said these have been my gray areas and uh, i used to uh, try again and again and again to get some rules and i used to fail but sometime down the line i got these rules now the next one also is very useful i used to have this doubt again because you know when it comes to some written material sometimes we see that um, seasons are used with the definite article sometimes they are used without and i used to wonder which of the two was the right one and now the rule that i have come across is that either way it is optional however the english word for is always used with the definite article the for okay uh now this comparative table is to show that the thing remains the same but it is the activity that decides whether you use an article or not now when it comes to the activity of um, sleeping now when you say i go to bed it is the activity of sleeping now when you say don't jump on the bed bed becomes the object in your sentence so the use of the article depends on the activity and the object now as i have said earlier i shower before breakfast the breakfast was delicious because you are talking about a particular kind of breakfast that you ate you are not referring to breakfast in general terms they are at church the church definite article one particular church she is in class studying the class is in room 102 because it refers to one particular group of students okay this uh, prison jail and all the same as what we said about church now we have this is again very important 
I was happy to get this um, particular school. Uh, I mean, this particular rule. You look at this. Use the, if the title of the school has of or for in it. The university. Why do we say the university here? Because it has got of Maryland. So if the description has of or for, you will use the. But look at this. If the university is the name of a person or of a place, you will not put the. I found this rule also very useful. If you have of or for, you will put the, the university of, the Maryland school for the deaf. But here it is just Maryland University because it is not followed by of or the. Again, don't use any article if a building on campus is named for a person. If it is the name of a person, if it is named after a person, don't use any article. Now, these are all some examples with the explanations. And just take a look. It is um, 7.21. We have just 10 minutes to go. We go up to 7.30, you told me. Am I right, Ashok? Yeah, madam. We can go uh, over at 45 hours. If it's needed. Um, I think I'll stop uh, sharing and I will uh, open the floor for uh, discussion because there is no point in simply continuing if there are doubts. Okay. If there are questions to be raised, I would be happy. I hope you understood. Uh, I mean, please don't get annoyed when I say I hope you understood as though, you know, she has given us something to understand. Not that way. My desire always is to discuss. And um, I feel very happy if somebody gives me a rule that I wasn't aware of. So in case you have any question looming large in your mind, you may. Could you repeat her name? What is that? Her name? I didn't get it on the chat box. Uh, it is... Um, it is the blogger's name, Melanie, you mentioned. Uh, Melanie, Melanie. M-E-L-A-N-I. Melanie. M-E-L-A-N-I-E. N-I, did I say? N-I-E. Melanie. So I used to joke about it with my students. I used to say, if Malini can't help you, Melanie will. So go to the blog, I used to say. So is there any question from your side? No questions? The participants, if you have any questions, we can ask. Uh, Ma'am, I have a question regarding the last slide. Mm -hmm. If there is off, for, etc., Mm. Uh, we shouldn't, uh, we should use articles, right? The, mm. the university. But mm. I have come across universities that don't use the, although it has off in it. Mm. Is that also acceptable? For example? Example, Uni University of Toronto, University of Toronto. Toronto. Yes. Okay. I mean, uh, is it on their board that they use that Tasneem? Yes, ma'am. Everywhere. See? That is as caption, right? No, no ma'am. It's there, there in their campus and everywhere. Like correct. That. That is correct. But if you are referring to that university, if you are referring to that university in a sentence, you will say, I went to the University of Toronto because of that off. Oh, I get it now. Okay. When uh, I'm referring to the university. Yes. Yes. Okay. yes. I thought it's now, like they may put anything as they sometimes, you know, they may put it as the name, right? Title, the okay. name, proper so noun. Name in itself can be with, uh, yes. Yes. mentioned without Even the if the name the itself article. is one, when you refer to it in your speech, you will put the because that university has off and for in it. All right. Thank you so much, ma'am. That was helpful. Oh, yes. Anything else? No other question? Ma'am. Yes. Um, 
when you are giving the examples so, uh, before the words old rich and poor ma'am you told that we should use the you said the that word, you the told us that. Hmm. yes yes sir the word hmm. the word the rich hmm. uh, ma'am will you please give an example yes old, now you can old, say that old, old. yes yes i believe in helping the poor okay the uh, old have no choice but to depend on their uh, but to depend on the youngsters in the family the old you mean to say all old people i like yes. to help the poor you mean to say all poor people so I what i am trying to say is ordinarily the word old is an adjective isn't it he is an yes. old man she is a yes at, at that time at that time we use uh, uh, when we are uh, talking about the old man at that time we use an old man Correct. but in the in that when we use the word old as an adjective at that time we should use the no 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 it's the like reverse so, of what you are saying when you use it as an adjective you will say an he is an old man right old is the adjective huh. man is the noun he is an old man but when you use old as a noun for a class of people okay i care for the old when i say i care for the old what do i mean i care for all old people yes but instead of saying i care for all old people i say i care for the old okay yes then one more uh, uh, when we are uh, uh, talking about the, about park we then about kabban park like that i think we should use the park no the kabban the kabban park no 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 article i gave you that pans no nimonicade p a l s park huh? avenues lakes and streets don't At, take huh. the article before zero article we should not use any article ha zero article that before is the i'll uh, before a particular park no every before a particular every park is a particular park only no i mean see hmm. that is when it becomes difficult i i wish on the one i, line, I want to go to see that is when it becomes difficult on the one hand we say that hmm. you must follow one and only rule right we say yes. when one and only we use the the right? we say the taj one and only the, we say that. if unique for on unique on the other hand on the other hand when yeah. it comes to these so what do we say exceptions as our chief guest said more number of exceptions to the rule than rules themselves yes, so ma'am. even though this comes under the category of one and only we will still have the rule of zero articles for these thank you ma'am understood yes ma'am thank you so that is why it's a very difficult language at one point of time we give you one we, we give our students one rule and then we ourselves tell you but those buts are so many exceptions to the rule are so many that is the thing that poses problems to us also when we teach when we take up a concept okay is there anything else Uh, madam uh, like yes, ma'am this is just feedback it has been a wonderful session madam okay. that uh, the way uh, like you have given the example explanation rationale never uh, like thought that it would be like this so we have learned a lot of things it's really really good thank you very much madam for that thank you very much it makes my day because uh, i like to meet and discuss meet people and discuss a few ideas because you know all of us have uh, been constant learners right i studied in um, 
uh, mine was kannada actually my language yeah. has been Hi. language at home my mother tongue is tulu and my education up to 10th standard was in kannada so you know every time i like to learn new things mm. and when we meet people it's always a platform for learning yeah how to That's teach grammar I, i don't mind getting corrected and i hope others don't get don't mind getting corrected i don't mind i even if i am corrected by my students i feel happy because as they say a mistake is a mistake only when you make it twice yes. first time it's not a mistake so if someone corrects me i feel happy because for the rest of my life i can avoid that mistake yes so i look at people with the same attitude but sometimes i get slightly worried whether you know people consider me slightly brusque or whatever so i feel worried about that no madam it was not like that really like the thing is that how to teach grammar part like that also we have learned today through this session it's really good thank you thank you so much yeah we have to teach functional grammar isn't it not yes be yes. the rules i have yes. seen yes i have taught english for nearly four decades yes but i have seen that rules don't help yes they don't help at all you have to go through examples so that sometimes you know it shakes them out of their complacency yes. many students also think that their language is fine mm-hmm. and when we show that it's not as good as they think it to yes. be <laughs> they are shaken out of their complacency thank so you i always go to my concepts through rules mm. but i immensely i mean benefited from your input uh, bilasha what you said about the english language also was uh, so enlightening yeah, yeah. <laughs> i should have put down the points anyway the recording is there so i can go back <laughs> okay ashok takate thank you abhilash madam for your nice feedback uh, i request the participants if you have the questions you can also ask it at the same time you can share your feedback on the session today i have other old students of mine <laughs> <laughs> Safan also. Can yeah, unmute yourself and uh, give their feedback. Ben Box is popping up with the very nice feedback. Right? Can unmute yourself and also speak. What did you say? I was just going through because uh, some have been my students, I believe. So it was very nice <laughs> <laughs> that I got the opportunity to reconnect, not only with my students, with all of you. Thank yes you. ma'am lovely to see you. you we miss your english classes too we'll never <laughs> forget that my whole life <laughs> the thank feeling you. is mutual ma'am the feeling is mutual <laughs> thank you so much your love for the classics is what inspired us ma'am i'm a english teacher too now oh, good, so good. i remember you love the classics you would explain them to us so it's still there you know your good work is still going on thank you it's very heartening to know that hmm. okay we would love to know if there are any other sessions ma'am like this <laughs> so whom do we contact if there are any sessions like no i think uh, sir has been conducting many although i came to know about it quite late it's the 40 Sixth, madam. Forty-six today, no. We want to have one more session from you also on another topic. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you so much, uh, Manali, madam, for such a wonderful session. Uh, it's really interactive, very educative, and it has helped us uh, all the teachers to so come to some kind of clarity in using the articles. Actually, really a challenging task to use the right article in the right place. most of the time is we uh, as you said uh, we have the tendency to use the articles everywhere we don't use the uh, we are not into using the zero articles sometimes in that area we make a lot of mistakes uh, today's session is really really helpful to 
uh, understand the using of uh, articles. Thank you so much on behalf of English Teachers Forum here, and also on behalf of the International School. Thank you so much, madam. And I would like to extend my heartfelt thanks to Ajalasha, madam, for being with us uh, as the chief guest and also the participant and sharing her wonderful thoughts with all the teachers. Thank you so much, Ajalasha, madam. And uh, I thank the, uh, today's host, Diksha, uh, madam, and all the faculty members of the Sikha National School. And most importantly, the teachers who have joined continuously in our series uh, uh, every week on Zoom and uh, YouTube Live. We, we, with the help of your uh, participation, we are able to run this session uh, series so far. We are heading, uh, heading towards the 50th program of our series in the next three weeks, uh, three or four weeks. Thank you so much for your enthusiastic participation. With this, uh, we would like to uh, wind up today's session. Thank you so much. Good night, everybody. Thank you. See you all sometime.